Yesterday we talked about where the Islanders can draft, and today we're going to talk about strictly the draft lottery, and can the Islanders win it, baby? Not gonna lie, that was kind of a creepy way of saying that, but really it, it kind of encapsulates what we want to know. Can they move up? Can they get a top end prospect out of this draft? Can they win the draft lottery? And so right away we have to talk about the new rules. And, and I'm sure I've already gone over that in a previous video, but just for the sake of repetition, we're going to do it again. At the draft lottery, you can only win one of two picks. The first and second overall are the only picks in play. You can also only move up 10 spots maximum, maximum. If you win the first overall, you can move up no higher than 10 spots. And so from yesterday's video, we know that the Islanders can own our about 13th. They're going to draft probably 13th overall right now. And so if they win the draft lottery, that will at most move them up to third most. Now there is that, like I said, potential they fall to 12th. Well, that means at most they can go second overall. So still, they will not draft first overall unless some like weird things happen with the season. And I don't think the math works in their favor for that to happen. I haven't gone over it, but let's safe to say it's not going to happen. So highest they can draft is second overall. Okay, well, what are the odds that they can move up at the draft? Well, it's not good. It's, <laughs> it's not good at all. When you look at it here, thanks to Tankathon, the Islanders have a 2.6% chance to move up to, to first overall. Oh, sorry third overall and a 1.7 chance of moving up to fourth overall now fourth would be if they win the second right they, they win the second overall pick if you will uh so that would only be able to them to move up nine spots instead of the 10 but they're likely to finish 13th there is a possibility that they move back and finish uh 14th and that's only because uh you have the potential that the winnipeg jets or the Vancouver Canucks, or the Vegas Golden Knights move uh, uh, up 10 spots and thus pushing the Islanders back down. So as it stands now, the Islanders have a 2.6% chance of drafting third overall, a 1.7 chance of drafting fourth overall, 90.7 chance of 13, 5.1 chance of 14, and less than 0%, less than 1%. It's less than 1% of, of drafting uh, 15th. They're likely to go 13. That, that's quite clear. Now, those odds are low. There's next to no chance that the Islanders move up 10 spots, maybe even 9 spots at the draft lottery. But we still like to click on that draft simulator, right? We still like to run it to see, well, m maybe if we run it 50 times, how many times did it happen? Well, what about 100 times, right? When we have like no other, nothing better to do with our lives, we click on that thing a million times. And uh, well, I didn't have anything better to do with my life than get ready for this video. And you'll see in the bottom corner here that I'm running that simulator. I've done it 50 times because I didn't want to do too much more than that. Because like I do have other things that I do with my life, but a lot of it is spent down here in the basement. But I did it 50 times just to see what would happen. And honestly, they move up twice in those 50 times. They move up. They, they win the first overall moving 10 spots once, and they win second overall, which is moving nine spots once. They move back, though, four times. So they're more likely, when I ran it, to move back than they are to move forward. Then there's also the 45 times where they stay put at 13. So they're more likely to stay at 13, like we already saw, than they are to move forward, but they're more likely to move back. And that corresponds with what we're seeing with the odds, right? 2% chance or 2.6 to move all the way up, 5.1 to move back. That tracks. Now let's just assume they move up, right? For the sake of argument, they're, they're moving up 10 spots. What does that look like in terms of the caliber of player we might bring in? So we know what we were looking at yesterday, and I'm not going to run the same example because now what I want to look at is the actual players we could pick up. I'm not going to look at, well, for the five years averages, they might get this or that. I don't want to do that again. I want to look at individuals at the draft this year. And so if the Islanders move up 10 spots to take that third overall, according to Tankathon, we're probably going to get Simon Nemich, which is incredible. I would love that. A right-hand puck-moving defenseman who doesn't look ready for the NHL today, but isn't far away. Heck yeah, sign me up. Let's go. They get the fourth overall, Logan Cooley. That is a good center. He's going to do good things when he gets to the college scene. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to what he can do at the next level in that. That's college hockey. 
I don't imagine he's going to stay there very long. He might have two. I don't think he'll have a third year. I think after two years, they're going to be, let's go, kid, you're kind of ready. Maybe he stays three just because, like, he is there for an education. But still, like, this kid is going to do good things at the college team for sure. So we're talking ourselves into Simon Nemec, which is a top-end defensive prospect. The, the top defensive prospect in this prospect pool. And Logan Cooley, which is maybe the number two center. That's huge, right? Like, we, we already have a center in Aturatu, but you can't have too many centers. Worst case scenario, they don't work out to be a center, and now you've got a winger. Worst case scenario. That is a good worst case scenario to have. Now, consider what we might be picking up if we stay at, let's say, 13. Kevin Korinch Korchinski. There, I have screwed that one up massively. Kevin Korchinski. A decent defenseman. There's nothing wrong with Kevin Korchinski. But the ceiling, as it stands now at the draft, is much lower for Kevin Korchinski than it is for Simon Nemich. Maybe you talk yourself into Connor Geeky, who's playing well at the WHL level, um, but I would much rather Logan Cooley than I would Connor Geeky. Nothing against Connor Geeky. It's just there, there's a reason you would like uh, Logan Cooley over Connor Geeky. So when it comes to the draft lottery, we're going to have to temper expectations. And I'm sure your expectations are already measured enough. There, there's no way you're going into this going like, yeah, let's go, baby. We're going to win this thing because you know the odds are quite low based off of even if you haven't seen the odds based off of where the Islanders are in terms of their ranking. You're already aware of that. Uh, it would certainly be nice to get a Nemich or a Cooley or a Matthew Savoie or a Joachim Kemmel. It would be incredible to get any of those guys. But even if we end up with a Korchinski, a Giki, or a Mintyukov, that's good for the Islanders' prospect pool. Remember, they are one of the worst-ranked prospect pools for relative strength compared to the rest of the NHL. So getting one of those guys, the Korchinskis, the Gikis, or the Mintyukovs, boosts us up because you add Aturatu in that mix as well. That boosts the Islanders' prospect pool up a little bit more. And it just makes things a little bit more palatable to the fan base going like, well... Yeah, we, we may have sucked, but like at least the uh, the prospect pool is, is headed in a good direction. At least we've got that. That's the draft lottery vis-a-vis -vis the Islanders. They're probably not going to win the thing, but we're all tuning in on May 10th to see what the hell happens. Because if we could move up 10 spots, holy hell, that would be huge. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. If you have not subscribed yet, hit the button. And if you have or are thinking of doing so, and I hope you are, thank you, thank you, thank you.